Today, we're pleased to have uh, Jin Hao uh, Jung. He is a uh, fourth or fifth year PhD student at Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. He is working uh, with Tazo Kim, who's his main advisor, who is CMU alum. Um, but for this particular paper, they're going to present the uh, Apollo framework that they developed that was published in DOW 2020 with uh, my former student, Joy Ruraj, who is also CMU alum. So this is a very CMU flavored talk, even though it was all, the work was all done at Georgia Tech, right? And to be clear, you're not a database person, you're a security person by trade, but you've, you, you're, you're exploring the, the beauty and the, the majesty of, of databases. Is that correct? Right, it's correct. Okay, all right, go for it. And so again, the way we'll do this is that uh, if you have questions, just please uh, unmute your mic and then and then uh, you know interrupt and, and you know ask your question. But be sure to say who you are and where you're coming from, so we, we know you know who's who. Okay. 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 All right. Go for it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andy, for the kind introduction. And I am Jino Jung, a fourth year student from Georgia Tech. And today I'm going to introduce Apollo version one, uh, a system to automatically detect and diagnose performance regression queries in the database systems. I named it as a version one because we are still working on the next version of system to handle multiple classes. So this work is joint uh, work from between the Georgia Tech and eBay, and also combined work between the database and the security majors. Uh, by the way, I'm working uh, mainly on the security majors and especially I focused on the fudging techniques and anti-fudging techniques. And fortunately, I met Joy in the Georgia Tech and at the beginning of his, uh, Joy's career, and Joy proposed several research items to my advisor. And my advisor think, okay, we can use some several techniques from the security to the database problem. So that's how we started our research. So as the name implicates, the Apollo is holistic tool chain for debugging database systems. And first, we automatically try to find SQL queries, which shows performance regressions. And second, we also wanted to automatically diagnose the root cause of the problem for the developers. Our motivation begins with the observation that the code base size is getting larger. So for example, of the Postgres and SQLite, the size has been increased by seven times within 20 years, which also means that the internal relationship between components are getting more complicated. So now it is a challenging to build a system with a predictable performance. So let's assume one scenario. So a user of the database installed everything to the one specific database and he recently upgrades the, the DBMS installation, but query suddenly take much longer time to execute. Like this example of the Postgres, the from three seconds to the 12 minutes, and example of the MySQL, this bug report shows, says that some one second uh, query execution take now more than uh, approximately three minutes. It's because of the unexpected interactions between different components. Now we report this behavior as a performance regression. This performance regression could be a critical problem because it can hurt users' productivity because users expect uh, this is a very short query or interactive query, but it could become an overnight one. Let me show one simple example. This query looks very simple, but it shows more than 10,000 times slowdown on the latest version of a Postgres. The reason is uh, because of the optimizer update. The developer made a new policy for choosing the scanning algorithm. So only if the latest version have enough memory for choosing the bitmap if scan, it choose the, the bitmap scan. But somehow this query overestimated by the optimizer. So they estimate the, estimated as a big size of tables. So the latest, latest version choose to use the slower sequential scan in this case. So the, the result resulted in evaluating all the predicate on the all tuples in the table. 
So that caused more than 10,000 times slowdown. Okay, sorry. Can, can you, sorry, can, can I interrupt? Can you go back to this slides? Okay, so, so I read your paper, it's interesting, and, and I read this particular thing. I, I just trying to understand what is actually happening here, because according to my understanding of TPCC, this is an empty query, it will report like nothing, oh, empty, or zero, empty. yeah. Yes, right, yeah, the so. result is empty, right? But the, their optimizer's estimation is overestimated, actually, especially due to the least here, function here. So when they tried to, tried to do some constant folding, they made yeah. an error. So it resulted in the overestimation. So the, both the old version and the latest, latest version have the same problem with overestimation. But the result of the overestimation affected differently. Even if the okay. earlier version overestimated, but it still used the fast bitmap scan. But okay, okay. The, okay. Uh, Okay, so, sorry. Um, so, so I no, forgot you can one thing. Anytime. Uh, yeah, I know. As Andy said, I forgot one thing. So I'm interrupting myself. So this is the first time I'm joining this. My name's Don. Okay. I'm graduating from University of Utah. So I'm going to be a assistant professor at Penn State University. So oh, I see. Uh, that's my brief introduction. Yeah. So anyway, okay. so so back to the question. So first of all, you said both versions, at least zero to one, the constant folding doesn't work. So yes, it right. doesn't really report to zero. It reports mm -hmm. to something, identifier, or whatever. So uh, from that perspective, uh, is, does that actually mean that uh, no matter how hard you try to build like min-max boundaries or were, were, were histograms, it doesn't help? So it just like, like a, a very bad estimation versus an even worse estimation difference. Is that what you mean? Uh, I, because I, you, 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 hold on. Uh -huh. Let's keep going. This is this is a, this is just showing you that you can have performance regressions. This is the implementation of the optimizer is 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 uh, not relevant to the, the point he's trying to make right here. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I will leave it be. So please right, go. Keep okay. Going. Okay, and I'm keep moving. So in here we could ask several challenges. So we can observe several challenges. The first and most important one is how to discover the queries with the regressions. A second challenge is for the developer, when the user discovers some wrong, some weird behavior or the regression behavior, how to minimize the query down to the essence of the problem? Because if the user just send the lengthy and long query to the developer, the developer should spend the time to narrow down the problem. So we wanted to automatically minimize the, the size of the query while maintaining the problems. And the final question is how to diagnose the root cause of the regression automatically on the database systems. And to tackle the problem, we propose Apollo system. So first, our system accepted database connection from at least two versions of the database. In this case, we show the old version and new version. And to tackle the first problem, is covering queries with regression, we introduce a SQL pause component. And also uh, in the SQL pause component, we adopted feedback driven pausing. And to answer the second question, how to minimize the query, we introduce a SQL minimizer by using bidirectional query reduction algorithm. To diagnose the problem automatically, we introduce a SQL debugger which combines statistical debugging and commit by section. Now let's begin with the Apollo toolchain. The first component is SQL fudger, so which tries to detect performance regressions. This diagram shows the two database connections, one to the old version and the other to the new version. But in our experience, uh, experience ex evaluation with Postgres, we used four different connections because Postgres support four different versions at the same time. So in this case, we wanted to find any regression between versions. So first, the query generator create random queries based on the SQL grammar probability table. And then executor run the query and measure the time and compare. If the differences are larger than the threshold value, we let uh, the query as a candidate. And finally, we validate the query to reduce, uh, to, to remove any false positive cases. 
Hi. 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 This is Hi. 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 We sort first we do some case study about the performance regression using the bug report so, so far. And we noticed that uh, the difference should be at least larger than three times to get acknowledged by the developers. So the answer is that we do some case study empirically to make the threshold. Okay, thank you. Great. So you're saying like the developers only pay attention if, it, if you're querying at 3x. Slower. Yes, right. So, um, like fifty percent of the regression, they just uh, tended to ignore, not just ignore, but tended to ignore. So, yeah, it's difficult to get some attention. So, yeah. So, so uh, just to add up. So, I'm Joy Arulraj, also from Georgia Tech. Uh, so, just to add some uh, context, the absolute time also has to be higher than some threshold for the uh, right, right. to take note. So, we kind of learned a lot by interacting with the developers. Of, of both MySQL and Postgres. Jinho extensively like uh, interacted with them to kind of figure out a bunch of rules for filtering these uh, queries. And what is the absolute time where they'll actually pay attention? Uh, actually, I should show some minutes. And the faster query shows some one or two seconds and the slower query uh, better to show some, at least some minutes, like so. If it is a millisecond, it's difficult to get some attention. Are you going to talk about how you generate the query? Okay, that's the next next slide, the fuzzer. Okay, right. So yeah, yeah. I will I will show how I we generate the query. Uh, first, we retrieve the schema from the database, and we also read the initial uh, SQL grammar probability table. So based on this probability table probabilities. Uh, we generate random queries. So some, after we generate some valid set of queries, we also check the complexity of the query. So for example, if the query uses uh, too many number of joins or too many number of sub queries, we discard. Because I will ex explain later, because if the query is too much complex, uh, complicated, so the developer also complained about the realist, real, uh, realistic city. So if the query is not realistic, so they think this is too much um, artificial. So this, that could not be a performance regression. So that's also another heuristic that we learned from the developer. Hi, so this is Dan. I'm a CMU student as well. Um, I was just wondering if the probability table is just to ensure that they're realistic queries, or, or was there uh, something see. else uh, done with that. Okay. Uh, oh, I, 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 I will explain using the next slide, okay? Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, after we generate, after we create a set of queries, we run the query using the executor. Yeah, if we find any regression, we read the query, and we count the each class when we find the gener uh, regression. And then we update the table so that if one class uh, likely uh, make regression more, so then next at the next round, we use those class more than the previous round, so that we can increase the probability of the most regression. That's how the SQL grammar probability table works uh, for the query generation and execution. Uh, hi, uh, so just to interrupt here. So, so I'm Don again, so I'm just trying to understand if there are two things as a dependency, for example, cast and least at the same time causing the problem, how can you kind of keep track of those rather than, you know, cast is here, I add, on, add one up, because one query can be slower and cause a regression, it's not only by one operator, it might be a combination of multiple. Oh, I see, it's yeah. an interesting and good point, but uh, we didn't consider that problem we, in this case, we calculate the, uh, all the frequency of the class. And so we don't consider the dependencies here. So like okay. your, probability, your probability table would have also least as well, right? 
Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, my, my problem is like one problem may cause not only by cast. Cast may be just one reason. And you can also do things like every time when you generate a query, you said is it slow and it put everything bump up one. But maybe like among like a hundred operators or like a hundred is pretty like like you have ten operators, only two of them actually okay. cause the issue. So, so it only it's, happens it's when it's fuzzing. So that's why like you just run this forever and then what would happen is eventually you would see, all right, I, I got slower because when when it was just cast and leased by themselves and not the, not the join, right? Because since we are running a massive number of queries, so there could be a case a cast without lease, so that uh, we can differentiate the case. Uh, okay, so you mean like as 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 you go along long enough, so it can actually see the difference like over time. Is that what you mean? Right. Yes. Right. You're okay. Correct. And cool. actually, I didn't ex explain in this slide, but explained in the paper. So if we uh, too much use the probability table, actually the probability is overfitted into specific class. Actually, in our actual evaluation to prevent the overfitting, so we reset reset the probability table periodically, like once a day or some, something like that. So. Okay. Thanks. I this is Dan again. Um, okay. I was just curious if you also track the uh, speed up as well as the slowdown. Because um, I imagine when you're building a uh, database, you're kind of making some sort of trade-offs occasionally. Um, oh, actually, uh, no, we already checked the slowdown compared okay. to the newer version. OK, thank you. But, but I think it's also some interesting aspect. So, OK, thank you for the question. And after we discover the set of performance regression inducing queries, then we have to reduce uh, many false positive cases. So, so in our evaluation, we apply the set of filtering rules, and then we report the case that we really believe is uh, as a performance regression. And then developer also gave us uh, another feedback to update the filtering rules so, so that we can uh, keep increasing the rules. This is very important to process to remove false positives. So for example, we have to remove non-deterministic behavior because the query is made with a random manner. Uh, somehow we can compare the specific uh, times of the column with the current time. So since we are using the current time to make a comparison, the behavior cannot uh, become uh, deterministic. In these cases, we have to discard that case. Are you and fuzzing? Only, are you fuzzing um, like insert, update, delete queries? Things that actually modify the table, or is it only selects? Uh, we only do the. Uh, we only consider select, but in our next version of Apollo, we are considering creation, delete, update, so everything. Okay, and then so non-deterministic behavior like that means like the OS was doing something in the background, your your disk controller was doing something weird, and, and you got slower. So how do you handle that? Do you just update, like, will you fuzz the same query multiple times? Oh, yes, right. So after we discover the regression, we run the query multiple times to check the actual running time. Got it. With the average yeah. value, yeah. OK? Cool. You know, another interesting perspective is a non-executed plan. OK, there is a query using the sub-query. And older version and newer version DBMS take different run paths in the optimizer. But somehow, the older version uh, returned nothing from the sub-query, but newer version returned several tuples from the sub-query. But since older version returned nothing from the sub-query, uh, the older version didn't execute less of the queries, less of the path, run path. But, but the uh, newer version executed more paths because the sub-query returned something. In this case, the uh, developer clarified that this is not a bug. This is an inheritance problem of the DBMS. So we also discard uh, any case with a non-executed plan. And finally, like I mentioned, we also check whether the query is too complicated. So if the query is too complicated, we just discard. This is from Pizantis, uh, mm -hmm. from the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Actually, this uh, second case is very interesting. Can you give us a more concrete example? 
Oh, okay. Uh, I think I have to uh, repeat uh, some detailed manner. Uh, okay, we started from the um, query contains subquery, but we cannot guarantee the which uh, optimizer choose which run path to choose. So, but uh, developer think the um, and okay, and the old version of the EBMS make uh, return nothing from the subquery, but newer version returned uh, several tuples of row from the subquery. But but the developer thinks it's not the optimized result or misbehavior of the optimizer. Uh, it's more like a, some lucky choice from the older version. So you refer is uh, is not the query optimizer's problem, but could be operator's problem. Actual uh, functionality, because now you are giving a system that, uh, as Andy asked, uh, is uh, a static database. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you run the a query, in principle, okay. if it's returning three tuples, it should return three tuples. Right. All the times, the only difference with respect to regression is speed. If you right, return actually. a different answer under the right. same circumstances, it means you have uh, a buggy system, inconsistent system. Right. Actually, we also thought the same way as you did. So we thought the misestimation is also a problem when we first bought, but the developer, um, uh, from the feedback, the developer thinks the misestimation is inherent problem of a DBM system. So they can understand that. The answer is what cons is confusing me. Uh, so, so I think uh, just to add some more context, uh, hi, hi, Panos. Hi, yeah. Joy, how are you? Uh, good, I'm doing well. Yeah, so, so in this case, uh, the two versions of the system, uh, in the old version, they came up with a different query plan. And in the new version, there's a different query plan. And uh, because of an optimizer update. And then in the old query plan, apparently the sub query uh, ended up during execution, it didn't return any results. So because of that, the whole query ran very quickly. In the new version, this optimizer update uh, probably helps a lot of queries. But for this particular query, it ended up picking a plan wherein uh, you end up like doing more work before you figure out that it's actually not useful work. And, and therefore, there is a performance regression. So, so it is actually like stemming from an optimizer update. Okay, doc. I, I think I got it. So yeah, thank you for that, sir. What you're saying is the first question that uh, uh, Dong asked. Hi, Dong. Nice meeting you. Is uh, that... Uh, Basically, the second time, or the first time, the optimizer recognized that it's an empty query from the catalog. So it didn't bother to invoke the, whereas the other one, it retrieved tuples and then rejected them later on. That could be possible the case. I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we give more details in the paper. We can definitely like chat about it offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right. Uh... Uh, so the uh, uh, when the SQL first discovered the performance regression inducing queries, then we we send all the queries to the SQL minimizer. So the minimizer uh, tries to find essence of the problem to report the regression to the developers. So in the in this component, we apply the two different strategy. The bottom of query reduction uh, strategy try to extract valid sub query. And top-down approach tries to uh, remove unnecessary expressions iteratively. Let me show you one example. So assuming that this is the query the user of our system uh, discovered. And using the bottom-up approach, we try to extract the sub-query. And if there is a dependency, we remove the dependencies between the original main query and run the query. If this query still shows regression, we extract these sub queries. That's why we call it as a bottom up approach. And after we extract this uh, sub query, we apply top down approaches and try to remove elements one by one. So we can remove conditions and columns and sub queries, another sub queries, and we remove clauses. So after the removal process, 
you can get the minimized version of the query. Then the user can report this query to the developers. Now, uh, okay, wait Tony, a second. Uh, Sorry, don't again. So, so uh, trying to ask this question is uh, so you do this reduction. Uh, you do this reduction seems okay, but uh, there is a problem when you have a, such a complex period cause of regression, and then when trying to remove things, how do you make sure that when you remove this thing, it still costs the same regression? Does that make sense? Right. So every time we remove something, we run the query to the older version of the database and newer version of the database, and check the execution time. OK. Yeah. So you and still see the similar gap? So you think it's the similar regression? Uh, similar, not similar time, but similar magnitude. So, similar gap, I mean, the similar, right, right. like, relatively difference. Yes, right. Okay. Right. But not the okay. second, similar, uh, not the absolute time difference. OK, cool. Okay. And finally, we apply the SQL debugger to automatically find the root cause of the problem. Uh, the SQL debugger actually plays with the SQL minimizer. So we, when we apply the SQL minimizer, we generate many partially reduced queries because we are applying the strategy, our strategy one by one. So there are several partially reduced queries. And at the same time, we apply commit by section and try to find the first slow version of the DBMS and the first fast version of the DBMS. And using the partially reduced queries, uh, we get the run trace. So in this case, we collect control flow uh, from the run trace, and then uh, using the by using the statistical debugger, we finally get the bug report. This is the overview of the SQL debug. The first we use a uh, commit by section. This is very uh, widely used technique. So starting from the old version and the newer version. We, we do a binary search and find the least proba problematic uh, commit. In this case, the commit number two is the starting point uh, where the problem begins. And again, uh, we place with the SQL minimizer again. So starting from the original regression query, we apply the minimization and we collect the partially reduced queries. And then we run all the queries to, to the fast and the slow version of the DBMS. But here's one minor problem because uh, we are running, okay, collecting the run trace from the two different versions of a DB. The, the address of the binary is different because, because, of different because of the different compilation. Even if we have the same function, the address of the function is different. So the run trace has different offset. So to correct the problem, uh, we enumerate all the function names, and we also enumerate the address of the function. So by using the base address of the each function and the offset from the beginning of function here, so we make an alignment. In this case, the name function has different address, and but we find the same predicate using the offset from the the hex 20 address. So in this case, we make alignment and get the result of the run trace. So after we make alignment, now we are ready to use the statistical model. So, and we uh, explain the detail about the statistical model in our paper. So please refer to the, some detailed information about the statistical model. So when we uh, provide this uh, predicate information and the, and the result, we can finally generate the final report. So our intuition of the statistics curve model is that we calculate the relationship between the predict, observed predicate and the result. So, so far, so I introduced the uh, Apollo. Yeah, so just an um, interruption, uh, uh, as you know. Yeah, so going back to Dong's question, uh, I, I think that uh, during reduction, as, as you said, Dong, like uh, sometimes the regression disappears right, during, right, right. During, during minimization. Right, right. So some of these partially reduced queries actually are good queries in the sense that they don't exhibit a regression. And, and some of them actually do exhibit the regression, uh, which mm -hmm. is exactly what we need for uh, statistical debugging. We want to actually like compare the control flow traces for these 
queries uh, that are running fast against those that are running slow. So, so in the next slide, uh, Jinho, I guess uh, in the next slide, um, uh, or maybe the next one after this. Uh, yeah, so here uh, the predicates in this case are essentially branches uh, in, in the program, in the database code. Uh, mm -hmm. So we kind of compare the branches that were actually taken uh, and, and the branches that were not taken uh, in the good runs and the bad runs. Uh, and note that minimization is an iterative process. So we have many such good runs and many such bad runs. So this, by comparing these branches that were taken and not taken, we can kind of figure out which branches are highly correlated with the regression. So, so that's the high level idea. Yeah, so, so I get that. The interesting thing about here is like a query optimizer can be pretty complicated, involving multiple rules, transforming rules, in, including different cost models and all this kind of stuff. I understand like uh, the way that you're trying to map different, uh, like, you know, uh, predicate conditions, trying to see like what kind of condition is triggering this problem. But uh, one thing I, I'm planning to ask at the end is like, you know, because it's complicated when you actually introduce a commit, when it's disruptive, will it actually destroy this whole thing? Because like you, you cannot even just align it. Because like, for example, you introduce a new rule that somehow like offsets the, the effort of another rule. Oh, right, right, right. Or, yeah, for example, like uh, the, the kind of predicate structure is kind of different than what it, what are doing. Blah, 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 blah. And even like, for example, you have condition one and condition two. I don't know if you're doing exact match. So for example, this one line of pre uh, predicates needs to be exactly the same as the second predicate that you aligned, or it just like showed up the same line and somehow it looks similar because that can cause another issue because the logic of that two line may be different. Uh, like, I, I guess you know, there are- interrupt. A better question is like for Postgres and MySQL, I mean, Postgres is, 30 years old, MySQL, you know, I, I don't know if you're look, looking at version five or version eight, like that's been pretty well banged on for, for a while. Like between commits, I'm, I imagine that there's not major changes. So the question is, I guess, how far back in terms of the number of commits do you have to look when you, when you see a regression and how widely uh, you know, modified is the code such that what Dong is pointing out, you know, mm. they can't do this alignment anymore. Right, that's a very interesting question. So in our case, we do the commit bisection first. So the amount of the coding mod modification is not that huge, right? So hundreds of lines of the modification. So among the modification, we try to pinpoint the location using the statistical debugging. But uh, in our next version of Apollo, we also tried some automated debugging using the statistical model uh, without commit bisection. In our some uh, experience, we uh, found that we can still find uh, the problem, exact location without the commit by section. Um, but in this case, here in this case, we use the good queries and the bad queries. But uh, to make the uh, statistical work model working uh, without the commit by section, we need some good query mutation. So, for example, here, so. Uh, we are just using the minimized version of the query, but to make it work, we need to mutate the query uh, uh, to hit the problem, pro, uh, so branch with the problem. So. so another thing is that I guess, uh, so Andy's question was actually about like how far in time do you have to go to actually like uh, find these bugs? That's actually not something we have studied, Andy. We have not really done an ex extensive study of several bugs. That would be a very interesting question to study. Uh, I agree. Uh, and and uh, another aspect, just a minor clarification, the predicates in this case are actually like assembly instructions. Yeah. So it's not at the source source language level. So it is pretty like lorus uh, uh, yeah. information that we are getting from statistical report. I'm not saying you do this, but you can maybe look at like, think of like post like three categories of the, the age of a system. Like you have on one hand, uh, Postgres, that's 30 years old. Maybe a, a middle-aged one would be like Mongo, right? That's 10 years old now. And then the most simplest one, like a, a, a newer one. I'm not saying our system, but like something that just came out like two years ago. I suspect your thing is probably yeah, easier, that, easier to handle on like older mature systems. Uh, I see. Yeah, that'd be a very interesting study. Thanks for the yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's interesting, but don't do it because it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. <laughs> I see. Okay, I will continue. So 
uh, after we applied the statistical model, we uh, generate a final uh, report, which shows the rank of the, the each predicate and and then to recap, so far I introduced the Apollo tool chain and introduced, introduced the three components. So for the evaluation, we tested on the Postgres and the SQLite, and we used the Dynamo Rio for the uh, getting control flow graph. So in our evaluation, we uh, try to see the efficacy of the SQL forger and the SQL minimizer, and the accuracy of the SQL debugger. So when we apply the SQL fuzz, we discover the 10 previously unknown unique performance regressions. And we observed uh, average more than 200 times performance drop on the both Postgres and the SQLite. In terms of the first positives, when we apply the, our all the filtering rules uh, run from the developers, uh, we could uh, remove almost all post positive cases. And, and our minimizer uh, significantly reduced the query size by 76% from the original size. Actually, go back to the last slide. So the, these are like the filter rules that the developers say, if it's not 3x slower, we don't care about it, right? Right, right, right. So those are the, all the feedback from the developers. So of, of the, this, the 99 queries you found that, hey, something's wrong, they, right, right. So the those they, queries are actually and actually anyway shows any regressions. Right, so so the, the, the several queries are the ones that something something got slower. Right, right. But then, but then after you do the filtering, the developers say, "Hey, do this filtering." It looks like you got like one query. Oh, right, right. So we found many false positive cases. So, but so they're first they're yeah, false yeah. positive. Like the false po like. Let me rephrase that. How many of them are like really things got slower and, and should be addressed, but they just don't have the, the, the labor or the manpower to do it versus like, oh, like there's, this is not realistic or you're doing something bizarre that nobody, you can't actually really do in SQL anyway. You know what I'm trying to say? Like that, the fact that like, the filter removes out so many, that's like an arbitrary thing because that's the developer saying like, yeah, it's, it's, this query takes three seconds. I don't care about that. But it really was a really was a, a regression. That's right, regression, and the developer acknowledged it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. False positive is not the right word I would use. Oh, uh, then. It's uh, like the ones that like. The, it, this is this is not so much a comment about what you're thinking can do. Like yes, you think you can do filtering, fantastic, do that. Okay. But it's more like my sequel said, hey, we don't want these because we don't have time okay. to fix them. Actually, so I will tell you more about the developer's standpoint. So, so to developer, they, it's better to remove some any possible cases that they may discard when they receive the query. So, so, based, so they that's why we made the filtering rule based on the developer's feedback. Uh, so, what would be useful here instead of just like before and after, mm -hmm. maybe like a breakdown of the discovered queries, which ones would be filtered out by your six cases? Uh, yes, right. So in our evaluation, we provided uh, the ratio of the filtering out for each the filtering loop. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. In fact, I had a similar question. So Chrisanti speaking, you know, you're mm -hmm. speaking. Again, I had a similar question because I was wondering whether you had this classification of what a, a class or class of queries that they're realistic, expected, or some very esoteric. And uh, uh, you know, because with this randomness, you get this uh, or practically correct queries, but meaningless. All uh, right. So um, actually, most of the queries that we generated are uh, not semantically meaningful because it's random behavior, random manners. But but if the query is simple enough and could happen in the real world, so we and consider it as a uh, regression. And, and the related question is, so uh, uh, why maybe you have already used some of the standard uh, TPC kind of queries or try to map the ones that you generate randomly, whether they fall into some characteristics I of see. these expected uh, queries that uh, systems use and uh, benchmark. 
Uh, in this evaluation, we used the TPC benchmark. And in the next version of Apollo, so we are generating any arbitrary database when we do fudging. But here, we used uh, the fixed benchmark and used only select statement to find the regression. Okay. Yeah, as a suggestion, maybe you can start uh, you know, with the benchmark and then do permutations. Mm, okay. more control way to see how the uh, fuzziness rather than completely random mm, i see uh, so so just to clarify panos i think that is you know like that isn't that what you're actually doing like you're starting from a tpch query and mutating mutating it yeah as a beginning we use the tpch yeah query. yeah so that's actually what Panos was asking. So we are not starting from scratch, Panos. Like we are actually like starting from these queries and morphing them. Uh, that's a very good idea. That's yes. kind of what he's trying to do. Okay, I, I missed that. Thanks. No, no, no. I think, I think, yeah. I think we just, just to clarify that that's what, what that's what he's doing actually. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, and going to the regression and the SQL debug. So uh, uh, among the uh, the generated predicate that we expected uh, the, among 10 regressions, five was in the first ranked branch, meaning that we correctly identified the location. So, and uh, two cases uh, was in the second ranked branch, and the uh, rest of the three regressions were in the third ranked branches. So, and this shows some uh, interesting case study. So, and this uh, query shows uh, about 1,000 times slowdown uh, on the latest version of SQLite. So the problem uh, was uh, happened by the bug fix, especially for the correctness bug. Uh, when the developer handled the uh, correctness bug on the where is not null statement, the developer uh, thought there is no at that time there is no was no way to uh, consider optimizer uh, uh, optimizers optimization behavior. So they discard the existing optimizer on the left join. So when they so meaning that so they when they fix the bug they discard the existing optimization. So the the consequence is that the optimizer no longer uh, provide left join optimization. So they make a much slower executions. And this example shows uh, about three times slower down. And the developer applied, uh, implemented a new version of the hash obligation, but by mistake. So the, the function, individual function was faster than before, but by mistake, the hash obligation function resulted in the uh, redundant building of the hash tables. So the function uh, generated hash table for each comparison. So that's why. It shows uh, three times slow down here. And before I conclude this talk, I wanted to introduce uh, several interesting fudging of work uh, used in the security community. So now fudging supports various domains. Uh, like now we fudge with kernel itself, and we doing fudging the hypervisor and application and several devices like IoT or the mobile phone. And also, fudging comes with hybrid approaches. Now we combined with external components. So this driller and the QSIM uh, incorporate the concurrent execution engine and try to solve complicated constraint in the branch. So whenever the fudging gets tough, it let the constraint solver to uh, calculate the complicated conditions. And another further called the user uh, employed the dynamic data analysis and they can find the one to one matching from the input to the specific branches so that they can mutate on the critical loca locations intensively. And now further is uh, with the deep learning technique. So they develop uh, a training mechanism to automatically discard uninteresting inputs. And there is an ensemble approach. So somebody, someone uh, combined all good fudgers and used the older fudger at the same time. And whenever one fudger finds the interesting, interesting test case, they share among each other. 
So this is called ensemble uh, puzzle approach. Also, uh, we have specialized environment for the fuzzing. So one group uh, developed a specialized operating system uh, for the fuzzing. So they solve solve the fuzzing bottleneck problem by introduce, introducing the better version of the file system or the better version of the fork mechanism. Or, or another research group pro proposed an idea to uh, provide hardware-based uh, coverage collection. So whenever the puzzle discover new input or interesting input, the hardware directly updates the internal BTMS structure for the faster calculation and computer reason. Jinhao, this is just sort of like a like a shotgun of a bunch of fuzzing papers that I'm sure are interesting. Mm -hmm. Which ones are actually related to databases? That should we care about? Okay. So, so I guess uh, yeah, Jinhao, you can. <laughs> uh, I I was also like uh, yeah surprised, but it's good. It's good. I guess he is trying to spread the uh, gospel of security research. <laughs> right. <laughs> to the crowd. Yeah. Uh, just, I, I, I clearly your thing works, and I think it's a good idea. But here's a bunch of fuzzing stuff that's like newer, and I like I don't know I, for all of these ones I don't know how to map them back to what you just taught me. Okay. Mm. Like, do I should I care about these things and not yours, or should, should I just care about yours, or do I need to understand these to, to appreciate yours? I, oh, I think um, this is kind of random, stuff, but I chose something that can potentially help the DB research, DB fuzzing, or or okay. just DB performance research. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I don't think there is some specialized operating system optimized for the database. Uh, so, so I think you can wrap, wrap up the network section okay. and move on, move on to questions, I guess, and take some questions. Uh, so you had acknowledgement side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in the current version of Apollo, so, um, we provide a tool chain for detecting and diagnosing regressions and uh, we are also working on the open source, so it will be soon open sourced. And now uh, we are also working on the uh, next version to discover uh, the other types of the bug, uh, such as correctness bug and performance bug, and the data corruption or crash. Uh, we are interested in integrating our system into more DBMS. So for example, we discovered more five, uh, five more performance regressions in Kakarot DB, and also we are improving our tool chain uh, based on their feedback. And finally, our automation will help reduce the labor of the developers, and then they can focus on the more important problems. Uh, I thank to the Postgres and SQLite and Kakarot DB for providing us Valuable feedback. I also appreciate the CMU for inviting me to present my research work. So okay, awesome. All right, so uh, we can't do applause, but I'm sure everyone is greatly appreciated because only two people dropped off since you were talking. So that's awesome. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll open up to the floor. If anybody has has any questions. Okay. So I have. Go. Okay. So so. Uh, you can go first. No, no, I, I you go, you're farthest away. You go first. Okay, cool. So, uh, so I have two uh, back and back questions. So it's kind of related. So number one, uh, I think uh, it's very interesting because, like, uh, I know a bit, not too much about fuzzing and like reducing. But one thing interesting I want to know, I mean, the related work is: Does anyone do something similar as you did, performance regression? on fuzzing that actually uh, like doing trying to find something other than like you know uh, just correction bugs or or like you know some security holes just crash the system something like that that's the common fuzzing areas right. so it's kind of a new that is the first time that I saw some things do the performance regression that's number one number two is kind of deeper in down this road because like you know when when any software like bumping up from one version to another supposedly they don't really introduce any correctness bug, uh, then there's a question, is the regression a bug, uh, uh, like not correctness bug, a bug, or it is a choice? So it's trying to incorporate uh, more common cases, people who actually cares more about, other than you know some corner cases, they may actually sacrifice those performance to introduce regression on those stuff to make uh, some more common cases and the user care about much faster. To answer the first question, uh, 
uh, there was very similar work on the security side and especially the previous work tried to find the performance bug, not the performance regression. So for example, the quick sort algorithm, the when a uh, user provides some specialized crafted input, the somehow quick sort algorithm shows very slow execution speed. So the fudging uh, technique tried to find such a corner cases on for the performance bug, not the regression. But uh, I'm not sure about the performance regression on the, the some general fudging approach. So that's my answer for the first question. And the second question, uh, could you also repeat the second question again? So the second question is, when, when, when there is a new commit getting into the system, okay. so it will cause some regression, but the regression can, can be not a bug. Hmm. It can cause by a choice. So that's what ah, I mean. Right. So, okay. yeah. Right, so... Um, and that requires a human to make a value judgment. That's not what his tool is trying to do. His, his thing is he's alerting you that something happened. Yeah, like, so uh, I guess, I guess you, just, you just spam everything that you find to me, and I can figure out which one actually, yeah, actually right. is a problem. That's okay. kind of the thing. Yeah, OK. Right, but, cool. we, but we believe if the regression uh, exceeds some amount of the threshold, that could be a problem. So even if the developer made a choice, the customer uh, does not may not agree with the uh, regressions. So. Okay, Panas, you had a question. Yeah, I, 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 in fact, it related to the second one, and uh, the answer I guess uh, provide uh, the answer to the question that we have before about from ninety nine uh, queries you ended up in one because all of the other ones maybe they were developers they thought it was by design rather than a bug, and. Uh, my question was similar in the sense that if we assume that actually systems are evolved, how much attention could you focus on the parts that have been changed uh, and see whether actually you meet some, you know, uh, expected behaviors rather than going to corners cases that might have been introduced in the second commit 25 years ago but they were never discovered so far, it's really irrelevant. So this is what I was thinking, that somehow this helps you from evolutionary point of view to detect problems that you thought would solve, and then they are actually become headaches. So that was a, and if you had discussed that with the developers. Right, actually this is different, uh, difficult problem. So we don't know the answer until, uh, before we actually submit the bug to the developers. So even if we are very sure about the bug, the developer just can say it was already discussed several years ago and we decided to not to think it as a regression. So one, one example could be our experience with some parallel execution. So in some case, the query decided, the optimizer decided to use the parallel execution. But when the DBMS engine prepare the parallel execution, it takes some time, some initialization time. So sometimes it is much slower in the uh, newer version because it uses parallel execution and uh, whereas the older version does not use the parallel execution. So since we don't know about the history and uh, this is a making from the developers, uh, uh, even if we observe some regressions, we uh, don't know the answer uh, before uh, we submit the, the report to the developers. Okay, any more questions? Hey, uh, I, I have one. Uh, David Daly. Um, Hello. David Daly from MongoDB. Uh, okay. First off, thanks for uh, opening up talks. That was kind of cool. Are you, are, you, are you the performance dude at Mongo? Yes, I am. Oh, awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so one question I had was, um, like this is really cool stuff. I'd actually read your paper before. Um, mm -hmm. But about concurrency, all, all of your tests, I believe, are a single query run by itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of our interesting performance problems are from things happening at the same time and something locking up in the system or, you know, TC malloc goes crazy. Um, is there a path towards exploiting what you've built there for the concurrent case also? Uh, 
Actually, now we are considering uh, redness bug and data corruption and crash and other things, but not the concurrency bugs. But since we are making it as a, a plugin, so meaning that if we are interested in the different class of bug, so we can uh, support the concurrency bug plugin to our system. I think that is a good idea. Well, I don't even mean necessarily that something's wrong, just that when you run 120 people doing something in parallel on this, it gets slow. Oh, right. It gets slow now and it didn't before. Right, but uh, in our setup and the current version, we didn't consider those concurrency and multi-connections, so single connection, but we may need to, I think we may need to consider those some issues. Okay. okay. I guess, David, what do you guys do now to, to, to find those things? Oh, we run a huge number of tests uh, regularly. Uh, we, uh, I, I could, that's it, not a minute long answer. Uh, but I mean, like, is, is it like, it's like the threshold thing. Do you care? Like that, I was surprised that, that Mon, or not Mon, my SQL and Postgres says, if it's not 3X, we don't care. Yeah, 3X seems a little aggressive to me. We, okay. um, and it depends very greatly based on how wide the the regression is and what what the test is. Um, but largely, we're on things probably as focused as you're doing here. We're probably going down if it's below a ten percent change. We're probably not looking at it, but above ten percent change, we're looking at it. If yeah. it's a more general end to end test where we're really loaded the system and say it's YC. YCSB or TPCC or, or Linkbench um, will detect and investigate things that are smaller than a 10% regression. Okay. All right, cool. Um, There's someone asking the chat, so I'm just okay, trying sorry. to acknowledge that. Uh, thank you. Let me see that. So uh, someone says, are performance regressions that don't involve a change in query plan more likely to be serious, such as the hash aggregate implementation example? That's a good question. I see the question. It goes so fast, so I, I couldn't understand. Click, get a click chat. Okay. You got it, or you're going to read it again? Yeah, it's the Zoom app it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> We're trying to do something. This is the first time I'm using the Zoom. So. Oh, OK. <laughs> so someone uh, repeat the question slowly. The question is, are performance regressions that don't involve a change in query plan more likely to be serious, such as the hash aggregate implementation example? So he's basically asking, if I throw the same query and the query plan doesn't change is, is versus another query it has a different query plan and they both have regressions, which ones are, are going to be more? Oh, I see, uh, I see. Seriously, right? Where we're like, which ones are, are more significant or worth investigating, uh, are, are more problematic? That's a good, that's a great question. Oh. So we thought about the problem, but um, actually we could not differentiate the internal optimizers, optimizers decisions. So when you report the bug, um, uh, uh, we didn't think about the actual internal decision uh, making from the optimizer, but well, we I, I consider. Think, uh, yeah, I guess the answer would be yes, uh, because I guess it is highly likely that those operators, execution engine operators, would be used more often, irrespective of a bug in the optimizer, right? So, so that's actually a bigger concern probably compared to issues in the optimizer, which rarely manifest. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, that's also something that we should probably like uh, study like bugs in different components of the, of the database system. So, so I just want to like uh, give a quick shout out to uh, John Reger at Utah, uh, who, whose work on C Smith and C Reduce actually kind of inspired the, uh, the Oh yeah. So th this is interesting because all of my background of fuzzers and all this come from, coming from John Reger, but like, I don't know if he's here or not. I actually sent this paper to him, so he will notice. So, <laughs> Yeah, and, and John actually mentioned that his work on C Smith and C Reduce was actually inspired by a conversation he had with the database uh, developers at Microsoft, 
in the in the SQL Server team in the 90s who are building this tool called RAX for stochastic testing of database systems. So it kind of is like uh, coming back. <laughs> to the yeah, coming back and forward, which is good. You know, this is this is how our community is supposed to move. Okay, uh, it's been an hour. I have a small child that is under the age of uh, one. Last question is. How usable is your code now? Like if I, how long would it be for me to say, point it at a new database and start running this automatically? Uh, so uh, Joey suggested this very systematic, systematic approach to support usability. So uh, we are thinking about some providing some YML files. The user can specify the port number and address. They just let the uh, fuzzle go. That's our goal. Oh, we, you, you're not there yet. But we if are we, working on it. It's research code, so I, I totally get it. OK. All right, this is awesome. All right, guys, let's stop here. Um, let's again thank Jing Hao for spending time with us and all, all of our friends from Georgia Tech joining in with us.